This is my son's uh, 2000 Suburban. And uh, he has had an instrument cluster problem for, oh gosh, six months to a year now. We've been trying to mess around, trying to work on it now and then. I live out here in the country, 20 miles from town. So every once in a while he would come out and we'd work on it and try to figure out what was wrong. Uh, this vehicle, I, I finally fixed the, the instrument cluster problem. Uh, let me see if I got my keys here. So he had nothing. So you can see now that the tachometer is working. Uh, he did happen to fill up the vehicle before he brought it out uh, yesterday. And you can see that the volt, that the volts are, the alternator is putting out a lot of voltage to the battery. Uh, right now I just started it up so the, the temperature gauge was working yesterday, it was around 200. Uh, it's not warm enough right now for the temperature gauge to go up, but it is working. Oil pressure is working. Uh, the parking lights and stuff, there was a little break here and I tried to epoxy it in. And so anyway, you can't really see where, what, right now it's in park. You can see that. And he has 200 and, 288,000 850 miles on this vehicle. This vehicle was given to him by an aunt who knew that it had quite a bit of problems. He had a rebuilt motor put in it oh, several years ago. But the instrument cluster wasn't working. It is working now and I'm going to tell you what I did to fix it. I'm going to tell you all the things that we tried to do. Uh, Put these keys away. So the first thing we tried to do, we just figured it was the instrument cluster itself. Uh, and we have seen some videos on how to re-solder some of the joints. Uh, so we took his instrument cluster out, took it all apart, looked at all the solder joints. Every one of them looked fine. So we put it back together and uh, I have a 2001 Silverado. It turns out that the instrument clusters in the 2001 Silverado and the 2000 Suburban uh, are the same clusters. So what we did was we swapped instrument clusters. Well, this cluster here with the 288,000 miles on it, when I put it in my Silverado, it worked just fine. And it did show 288,000 miles on it. Everything was working fine on it. So uh, we put my instrument cluster for my 2001 Silverado, which I think my Silverado has 130 miles, 130,000 miles on it. We put it in my, in my son's Suburban, and it would not work. So I told him, I said, you know what? It's not the instrument cluster. It's something else because uh, your cluster works in my vehicle and my Silverado has a fine working instrument cluster, won't work in here, so it's something else. So uh, the next thing that we tried to do, I've got the door open here. If I shut the door, that light will quit blinking. But uh, the next thing that we tried to do was... Uh, Several things. I guess we went around and we checked every ground connection. Uh, there's several of them to the motor, to the chassis. Uh, took them off, cleaned them, re put them back on. Because people kept telling us you got a ground problem somewhere. Well, we took every ground we could find off, cleaned it, put it back on, and still no instrument cluster. Um, and trying to think of what we actually did next. 
Uh, I saw a video where a person said there was a black and white wire. I'm going to open the door and go back out. You can see I got the, the hood up. I'm going to go back out and... I saw a video where a guy had an instrument cluster that wasn't working and he said there's a wire back there towards the back of the motor that goes down and fastens on the back of the motor and that it's a black and white wire. Well, I stuck my hands back in there. You can see it's really tight, really hard to get to. I had taken this off thinking I might be able to see it a little bit better, but even with that off, I couldn't. And I got up here inside the motor compartment, stuck my hand way back in there. I did find one of these corrugated plastic things that had a wire going back down towards the back of the motor as far as I could feel down there. It seemed like it did go back to the back. And I just kind of gave it some light tugs and uh, seemed like it was fastened solidly. And so I uh, thought, well, I can't even see what I'm doing. I can't even see what I'm pulling on. I can't reach all the way back to the bolt. I could never get a wrench back there. So I gave up on that idea. And what we did, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this now so I don't, I think I'm done. Well, I'll leave it open for a little bit. Anyway, what we did next was we had my Silverado and we had his vehicle. And I created this little thing here where we listed on here what the Silverado voltage would be using A8 as the ground. So whenever you take this instrument cluster off, there's four screws that hold it on there. Uh, whenever you take it out, there's a harness that plugs into the back. And there's two ground one of them is A6. You can see over here we got A6, the Silverado and the Suburban. And then the other one is A8. And A8 just happens to be black and white. A6 is a solid black wire. So anyway, <clears throat> what we did was we took the clusters out of both of the vehicles. We put... Uh, a multimeter hooked it up and we used the uh, a6 as the ground and then we and then we put the we turned the key on and we measured the voltage all the way down you can see here I'm looking at the Silverado a6 black ground and on a2 we had a hundred we had 10.15 volts a3 we had 10.28 volts a4, we had 11.86 volts. Then, after we measured, we marked them all down, and then we went to the Silverado again and uh, used A8. And you can see that we had, uh, whatever that says, 9.95 volts, 10.17 uh, volts, and 10.87 volts. There again, on A2, A3, and A4. And we marked them all down, and then we decided to try it on this Suburban. Same thing. We put the uh, the black uh, plug in into the harness, which is back here on the back. And then we put the, the positive one on the uh, A2, A3, and A4. And over here, when we used A6, everything seemed to check out. We had 9.6 volts, 10.53 volts. But over here, when I went to A8 and tried using A8, the black and white wire, as a ground, you could see that we got way short, and it was negative 1.5 volts, negative 1.2 volts, and then 4.83 millivolts. And you can see the comparison here. So right away I said, you know, there's something wrong with that black and white wire. Maybe that person's right about the black and wire that goes to the back of the motor. But I couldn't for sure find that black and white wire. So what I finally decided to do was to uh, find a good ground here. 
Well, the other thing that we tried to do was we tried to, we had somebody told us it's probably your, uh, the wiring harness for your ignition switch is probably what it is. So we tried that and, and that's why this, all this stuff is off down here. Uh, it wasn't the uh, ignition switch. The ignition switch and wiring harness work just fine. But I thought, well, maybe I can ground it to this, to this thing right here. So what I did was I used this as a ground. I put some alligator clips and clipped to this thing. And then I took the positive and I went over to the positive side of the battery. And sure enough, I was reading 12.35 volts. So it turned out that this was a good ground. So I was thinking about either soldering a wire to this or drilling another hole in the side here and putting a, a sheet metal screw in there and just putting a wire there and using that as my ground for A8 on the, on the back of this uh, instrument cluster back here on the back. Well, as I got to looking at this other side, I saw that there was a screw that screws this piece of plastic into this so I went ahead and undid that screw and I got a black wire and I peeled back the insulation and I screwed that down and then I took the other end of the wire and I put some alligator clips on it and I checked sure enough I checked it to the positive side of the battery and I had 12.35 volts I thought well I got a good ground over here so now all I got to do is figure out a way to take that wire up and put it at into A8. And if, if I took this instrument cluster out, you can see that that wire is running over here, coming up here and going up to the back of the instrument cluster. You can see that black wire right there. I added this black wire and it goes up to A8. I just pushed it into the back, kind of like a, a back probe. And, uh, then I, I taped it to the rest of the wires to try to hold it in place. And, and it, so it's just, it's kind of loosely in there. It's not the best connection to A8, but it is connected. And then I uh, pushed that wiring harness into the uh, instrument cluster. And as you can see, I did fix it simply by having a good ground for A8. And my ground is, is a screw that goes into this, that screw right there, and a black wire that's running up to my wiring harness, runs up to my wiring harness right here, up to the back of the wiring harness where I just have it pushed in to A8, and then I have it taped into place with electrical tape. And I'll be darned if it didn't fix a problem that we've had for, I don't know, six months to a year now. Uh, so basically that's the uh, end of this video. That's how I fixed what appeared to be a bad instrument cluster. Turned out that I had a bad ground at A8, which is a black and white wire. Going to stop the video now.